Um, well, hey, good morning, y'all. How y'all doing? Give me some thumbs up, some waves. Give me some dance moves. I love it. Well, good morning, y'all. I'm just privileged to be with you guys. Um, I told the group in the Southern Division call, and I'll tell you guys again, I am just so honored and privileged to be on y'all's team, um, to see you guys overcome challenges, become creative, solve problems. I mean, to see what you guys have chosen to do and accomplish the last four to five weeks just shows really the character that y'all have. Um, so just congratulations for making the choice um, to push through and to make a way. Um, so I know that we're going to see the fruits of that for the weeks and months and years to come. Um, so today, uh, Dana just asked me to talk a little bit about the power of going mobile and really what that means. Um, so I thought I'd just share a little bit about my experience seeing three different direct sales companies go mobile and what that was like as a salesperson, what that was like as a leader, and really what hopefully I can encourage you all to do is really just to take advantage of the different technology that you have at your fingertips and hopefully give you a couple tips uh, as you leave today. So I guess for those of you guys that are on the Zoom, I guess give me a, a thumbs up or put something in the chat if you are like, I love technology. This is my jam. I love, okay, I got a couple thumbs. Okay, and if you don't wanna raise your hand, this is totally fine too, but I know there's some of you on the call, they're like, oh my gosh, technology. I just wish I could punch this computer, but I need it for my next demo. Um, yeah, so there's a whole wide spread of different um, user experiences to use the tech term. But essentially technology is what we make of it, right? Just like our sales system, just like our product, just like our marriage, just like our bank account, right? What we do with the tool dictates what we get out of it. Um, and that's true for, for everything. And so when I think back to my experience first really coming into technology on a sales side, like Dan said, um, I'm a door-to-door -door girl. I sold door-to-door, uh, -door, knocked on doors uh, for many, many years. And we did it all using a paper process, just like Family Heritage up until 2018. And when the company approached me and my organization about launching a mobile app, we were excited, um, but we were also terrified because like we were going to have to change almost every single one of our processes. So I don't know if any of you guys on the call were around with Family Heritage before 2018. I know I see some of y'all's faces. And then think about today, you guys had to challenge kind of every single maybe activity that you had to do during the day when that mobile sales came up, app came out. And you probably had to come up with some new ways of doing what you're doing. Um, and that's true for technology today. I mean, think about the smartphone y'all had five or 10 years ago. Does anybody remember the brick Nokia phone? Like I paid snake on my mom's Nokia phone, right? My dad had one of those awesome cell phones in his car, right? Real fancy stuff back in the 80s. We thought he was so cool. I mean, think about how much technology has advanced, right? From when you had your first smartphone until now. I mean, can you guys imagine starting your day without your smartphone? I mean, have any of you guys left your home pre-COVID? Have any of you guys left your home, realized you didn't have your phone and literally drove all the way back home to make sure you had your phone? Yeah, <laughs> Harley's like, uh, yeah, girl, because it's everything, right? It's everything at our fingertips. And that's because we've chosen that, right? So I'll read you guys a couple of statistics. This is pretty crazy. Over 66% of the entire world currently has a smartphone. 66% of the world, right? In 2007, right, $60 billion was of worldwide revenue was generated from smartphone applications. And this year in 2020, it's projected to be triple that, $190 million in revenue. And I know you guys obviously came to Family Heritage because you love the product and you love helping people, but I know you like guys like making a good paycheck too. So why shouldn't we take advantage of that technology, right, when it comes to generating revenue? And really that's what technology is all about, is it's about saving you time, saving you money, and giving you a platform to make your process smoother, better, and stronger. And really that's the image I want um, really to kind of conjure in your mind is just a toolbox. If you think about a toolbox, whether you, you're the guy that hires the guy that brings the toolbox or you're the guy that has the entire set in his garage or you're the gal that's like me, he's got the pink set, whatever you have, you have that toolbox. And really what I challenge you to think about today is what tools do you have in your toolbox, right? What processes are you currently doing that you could automate, right? 
What processes are you manually keeping track of that take so much of your time that with a little bit of upfront cost or upfront time, you could automate, right? How can you save time in your day? And that's really the journey that I was basically forced to go on as a sales professional. Um, when I think back to 2012, it really wasn't a question of, do you want to go mobile? It was, we're going mobile in May of 2012. Do you want to be in front of the way or do you want to figure it out at the end? And what I saw happen with my organization is when we took that technological challenge, right? And we decided to be on front of the wave, we saw a 26% increase in revenue and profit for our organization, right? We tripled our recruiting over three years. So 100% growth year over year in our recruiting. Because with technology, right, we recruit that better quality of candidate. I mean, Janine knows this is true. She's in the recruiting room every day, Dan too. I mean, when we, can, when we say we have a mobile platform, right? It's cool, it's sexy. They expect it, right? They expect to be able to, yeah, they, Dan Jan's giving high five. They expect it. So we at Family Heritage say, hey, we're mobile. You can sell from anywhere at any place, right? That attracts a quality kind of candidate that wants to be on that cutting edge. So I saw that in my organization during, 2012 all the way through 2015 is that we not only tripled in size, but we grew in our sales. And what we also saw was that it was easier to train. We could train from the, from the comfort of using an application wherever they were. So we saw when we took that challenge for technology on that we grew and we were able to adapt. We were able to process new things because we had formed that habit. Um, and when I transitioned into Wildtree, a second direct sales company, with over 5,000 reps, right? So double what I was used to leading um, and training, I saw that, that just multiply even more. Um, working with you know, an average sales rep of the age of 37 or older, so a different kind of metric than I was used to working, um, they grabbed this and they ran with it. Um, there was actually a study done, um, if you wanna have some late night reading, it's by the uh, Economist Intelligence Unit. Um, it's called Mobility, Performance, and Engagement. I'm sure you guys want to want to pick that one up late at night but essentially what it said it did this survey of 1800 different employees and they found that age had no bearing on how employees engaged with mobile working so essentially everybody could grow whether they were 18 years old or they were 45 years old and check out these stats you know people companies in europe this was a study in europe they rated these different pioneers in support of mobile technology that 16 percent they had a 16% rise in productivity, an 18% rise in creativity. They had 23% rise in employee satisfaction and 21 rise in royalty, uh, loyalty. So what are those stats really saying is that when people have technology and they have the autonomy, right, when they run their own business or they have the autonomy to learn at their own pace, they like their job more. They do a better job of selling. They're more likely to stay around for longer. And your customers, right, on the receiving end of that technology, they like you more. They communicate to you more easily. They want to stay on the books because they hear from you and they feel that relationship in real time. So what we've seen, right, in technology, whether you're in Europe or you're in the United States, is that it can be a way to better communicate. It can be a, a way to better engage. It creates loyalty. You know, we think of these different use cases. Um, I just finished a grad school in December and we studied Starbucks. I don't know if you guys, any Starbucks users pre or post COVID? Anybody like some coffee? Yep, I see some hands raised. They did this, you guys, they're a giant when it comes to mobile, uh, to going mobile. They used a mobile, uh, a sales app and they created a loyalty program, right? Every time you order a coffee or a, ca a cappuccino, you get stars and you keep track of your stars on your mobile app and then you get free coffee right? And they've seen an increase, right? Over 20% of their, of their revenue because of their mobile sales app. Domino's, over 70% of Domino's orders come through either online or their mobile sales app. And 85% of their online orders of that 70, they're coming from their app. So people are ordering online. They're ordering on an app. They're used to that experience. So when we take on that challenge, right? We're comfortable. We're what the, our customers want. So I don't know if you can hear kind of the excitement in my voice, but when we take this challenge of technology on and we choose to go mobile, whether it's in making our recruiting more streamlined, if it's embracing our mobile sales app, what we're going to see if we choose to learn, if we choose to grow, if we choose to accept that challenge 
is we're going to see numbers rise, right? You will get that return on your investment. Whether that, that investment was you getting on your training app and just getting used to that new product matrix or figuring out how to integrate IRAs into your sales process, guess what? You'll have a better demo that next time. And that customer, they may or may not buy, but you're going to get more and more confidence so that the next time they will. So you'll get that return on your investment, right? If, if it's all a toolbox, what tools are you using, right? If technology is just a set of tools for you, what's in your toolbox, right? A lot of you guys have amazing strengths. You can build rapport with a brick wall, right? But maybe you're not very organized. So are you using an online calendar, right? Is it pinging you on your, on your iWatch every time you have an appointment? Are you, is it helping you keep track of your day, right? Some of you guys are choosing to let, you know, your day happen to you, but can you partner with technology to help you tackle your day? Um, does that kind of make sense? How am I doing y'all? I got some nods. I got some. So really the idea is, the idea is, is that you choose what you do with that tool. And just like if you were building a house, you wouldn't use, you know, I don't know, a hammer to install a toilet maybe, right? You probably wouldn't wash your glass windows with a screwdriver. You have to have the right tool. So really my challenge when I'm thinking about everyone on this call, you're like, okay, what does this have to do with me? Right? When you think about yourself, right? And the tasks you have to do each day, what tools are you using? Are you using any tools to make it faster, easier, stronger, more dynamic, right? Or are you continuing to do what you do and expecting a different result? So really, if you take that kind of inventory of your day and what tools you're using or, or not using, is there a gap? Because nine times out of 10, there's probably an app for you, right? Are you choosing, right, to learn that new skill or learn that new tool? And that's what's so exciting about when you choose to take on that challenge. Um, when we launched the mobile sales app here at Global Life Family Heritage Division in 2018, um, unlike all the other sister companies like LNL or AIL who had a drop in sales when they launched their mobile platform, y'all did it. You guys increased in sales. So you guys are to stand above out, you guys stand out of the crowd because you take technology and you run with it, right? And there's just more and more and more to come when you choose, right, to take on that challenge. And I saw a chat come up, Dan, did you have a question? That's awesome, Rebecca. Um, yeah, actually, I do have a couple of questions for you. Yeah. Um, from your vantage point, uh, I guess, how can we, or, or do you know of anything that uh, we can do to attract customers or agents via mobile? And I think if, I, if I'm hearing your question right, it's a little bit about like what's coming next. What does CRM look like for us? Is that kind of what sure. I'm hearing? Yeah. So um, for those of you guys that are new, you may not have heard. For those of you guys that have been around for a few years, you know it's coming down the track. Um, this, the company, right, with Globe Life, we're building a CRM. And essentially what that is, is it's a customer relationship management tool. So imagine, instead of having to email Janine for a customer list, right, Janine, uh, that you could log into your system and you could see all of your clients in one place, right? Imagine being able to know when their birthday was and ping off an email, right, or a text message and being able to create that and attract that relationship digitally, right? Imagine not having to keep an Excel spreadsheet of every single customer and what they got, but being able to literally click their name and see what policies they have and when their next payment's coming out. So that's the type of functionality we have within the CRM. Uh, and that's the, the kind of new tool you'll be challenged with uh, coming up in the near future. And it's a lot of functionality, but it's gonna come in pieces. And we are confident that you guys are gonna take that challenge and run with it. Because um, really what technology does, Dan, is it just lets us be ourselves and let the technology right push the paper. But we get to focus on building that rapport, serving those families well, um, being front and center in the relationship. Uh, what, what are some of those things that have come up recently and, and what should we really key in on? Yeah, no, thanks for asking. So hopefully everybody got the update today. We had a version 30 update that pushed this morning. So if you authenticated, you got a little prompt. If you haven't, no worries. You'll get it when you go to authenticate. We're continuing to enhance all the features that just came out and make sure they're shored up security-wise. But essentially on Tuesday, we launched uh, version 29 of the app and that had four really big new features. So for those of you guys that like to quote multiple products at once, we launched a product matrix. 
So essentially what that allows you to do is you can quote multiple products all in one place with just a couple pushes of a button. So that's really cool, especially let's say you're, um, you know, doing a Zoom with a business and they want to enroll in multiple products and they just need to know the price. Just tap, tap, tap. Um, we've also integrated uh, your families for protection list. And essentially what that is, is these are just families who've selected yes uh, to the marketing question in the e-application. And now you can search for them in your mobile sales app. I know. So again, Janine, I'm just trying to make your life a little better. <laughs> I'm just messing. Uh, I love Janine. She works really hard and helps out our family a ton. So uh, instead of having to request power names or wait or have somebody format them or email them to essentially now either by allowing your location. So you can allow the mobile sales app to track your location and it will populate names in that area. Or you can search a zip code or a city and it'll populate all those families who said yes to the marketing question. So I was on a Zoom yesterday with Lolo Smith and we were just literally looking up folks in Pine Bluff, Arkansas and seeing her whole book of business, right? All those names, all right there. So of course they're not, they're not, you can't see what they bought or what they're paying, right? Because those are somebody else's customers, um, but you can filter for your own customers and just have your own customers names list as well. Hey, uh, back really, on that names list, are they gonna be like, um, show individually per policy like they do now where I have to go and revamp it? Or is it just going to be just one name to show that they're a customer instead of one, four different, you know, same name four times? So I've seen it. I, I've seen it mostly the latter where it's condensed by household. But like, let's say for instance, you need like my husband and I, I have policies before him and then we have policies right. together. So I do show up with my own policies and then, then we show up as a family. Yeah, so forget. yeah, okay. Well, but you know, the now the way that we have to go in and revamp. So that's awesome. That's going to be really awesome. Oh, it's great to hear. Yeah. And so you can star your favorites. You can sort by your own clients. You can go alphabetical. It's just designed to make it really dynamic and easy awesome. on the go. No more having to have right that paid page protector and that Excel spreadsheet printed out, you know, no more worry about where's that IRA from 2012 that I put my page, but where is that IRA? Now all of your testimonials are integrated into your sales app. So you can have up to 10 uh, IRAs downloaded onto your sales app and you can push a button and, and show them anytime. So again, we're just integrating testimonials, names, uh, dynamic calculators. So again, just everything that you guys do, again, helping you not have to use the brain space to keep track of rates and prices, but get to keep track of that relationship and that family and be front and center. So just again, letting the technology do a little bit of the paper pushing so you can do your job, which is what you do best.